Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Uh, continuing on with the NBA play-in tournament, Hawks at Bulls here. This is the last one of the first original four. I'm recording this on Tuesday afternoon, so I don't know how we did on Tuesday night's games yet. Not crazy about them, though, to be honest. I think there's a lot more value on these Wednesday night games, personally. Uh, but yeah, Hawks, Bulls, let's do it. Welcome to The Source. The Source. Hey, get the sauce. All right, so like I mentioned, we got Atlanta at Chicago. It's the 9 versus 10. Loser is eliminated. The winner gets to play the loser of the 7-8 game to grab the potential 8 seed in the playoffs. That's how it works. We got the Bulls laying three points at home. The total sitting at 220 and a half. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. And according to the model, we should see a five-point Bulls win. Final score, 117-112 Chicago. Injuries and inactives, and we'll start with the Hawks. Uh, Clint Capella is on the report, but he's listed as probable. So Capella probably going to play in this one. Wesley Matthews is listed as questionable. But here the, here's the big one. No Jalen Johnson, who returned from injury for three or four games, but he's out again. And still no Okongwu, who's been out for a little over a month now. So two big pieces missing for the Hawks. On the Chicago side, we have Andre Drummond listed as questionable, which is actually significant because that dude just owns the Hawks. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Uh, Desunmu, also on the report, he's listed as questionable. Betting trends on the Atlanta side, just one and six against the spread in their last seven. Hawks definitely not playing their best basketball right now. Just three and seven against the spread in their last 10 on the road. But good news, Chicago's just six and eight against the spread in their last 14, but they've covered three in a row. Three and zero against the spread in their last three, but this game is being played in Chicago and the Bulls at home. Five and nine straight up. They're not even winning games at home, let alone covering. Five and nine straight up and four and ten against the spread at home since the All-Star break. But I do have some good news for the Bulls. They've actually performed very well against this Hawks team. In their last 11 meetings against the Hawks, they're seven and four straight up and eight and three against the spread. So the Bulls have played the Hawks very well, which is at least something if you're a Bulls fan, something to hold on to. We do have to mention that these two teams just played two weeks ago was in Chicago. Hawks got them. And obviously that was before Trey Young returned. Final score was 113-101 Atlanta on the road in Chicago. They got them. So let's match these two teams up on the court. We'll start with some net efficiency numbers in the last 10 games. Bulls have been better than the Hawks, 16th to 25th in overall efficiency, but they played a much easier schedule. Strength of schedule in the last 10 games, 7th to 21st in favor of the Hawks. In my opinion, the biggest matchup comes down to right here, Hawks three-point shooting against the Bulls perimeter defense. As we know, Chicago has struggled to defend the three-point shot all season. One of the worst three-point defenses in the NBA, and the Hawks shoot a ton of threes. So that should be a favorable matchup for the Hawks. The problem is the Hawks outside shooting has gone cold recently. Rewind two, three weeks, they were one of the hottest three-point shooting teams in the NBA. Look at the efficiency numbers. They've completely fallen off. So are the outside shots going to fall for the Hawks or not? Because, I mean, they're, they're going to get the looks, but if they're not falling, it doesn't really count for much. One of the games the Hawks played before their shots went cold was this game in Chicago. They went 19 of 40 from outside, 47.5% from three. Uh, obviously, as we know, Hawks got the double-digit win in, on the road in that game. And Trey Young's been shooting the ball pretty well from outside since coming back. He's 6 of 13 from outside, 46.2% from three. That's in the three games since he's returned. So on paper, the Hawks should get looks from outside in this game, but if their outside shots continue to not fall, they might not stand a chance in this game. On the other side of the court, we got the Bulls offense, and this matchup, I mean, there's really no other way to slice this. The Hawks defense is pretty terrible. There's no other way to phrase that. Um, I do have two positive angles for the Hawks defense if you're looking to bet Atlanta, though. Uh, first one being they don't give up offensive rebounds. The Hawks defense is terrible at pretty much everything, not rebounding. They're actually one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the NBA recently. Uh, the Bulls have been active on the offensive glass. Probably not going to be here in, that, in this game against Atlanta. The other positive angle for the Hawks defense, one of the Hawks' biggest weaknesses all season has been defending the fast break. One of the worst fast break defenses in the NBA. Chicago doesn't run the fast break. In fact, on the season, they're dead last, 30th in fast break frequency. So the Hawks' biggest weakness defensively, the Bulls aren't really equipped to exploit it. So there's two positive angles for the Hawks' defense. Problem is, after that, it's tough to make a case for the Hawks' defense making stops in this game. I mean, Chicago's been attacking the rim a lot. 
second in shot frequency at the basket in the last 10 games. Now, not very efficient, just 20th, but they attack the basket a lot, and Atlanta cannot protect the rim. Also, Chicago loves to shoot the long mid-range shot. Atlanta's got pretty awful defensive numbers against that shot as well. Bulls don't really shoot the three ball, but if they want to shoot the three ball in this one, it should be there. Hawks are pretty terrible out there as well. I mean, the Hawks are pretty terrible defensively across the board here, where whatever Chicago wants to do offensively, they should be able to do it. So there are a few angles there for Atlanta. The Bulls are terrible at home. There's a couple aspects of this game where you can like the Hawks, but this line is all the way down to three now, and the Hawks are not healthy. I mean, maybe if the Hawks are healthy, I could see it, but no Okongwu, no Jalen Johnson. There's just way too much of a size and physicality disadvantage here. Capella only plays about 25 minutes a game. Vucevic for the Bulls plays 34, and they also have Drummond on the bench, and I know Drummond's questionable, but Andre Drummond owns the Hawks. In his last three games against Atlanta, he averages 14.7 points per game and 18 rebounds per game. That's the backup five. So who are the bigs on Atlanta that are going to body up with Vucevic and Drummond down low if Drummond plays? There's just way too much of a size advantage here. Uh, Chicago should control the game on both sides in the paint. There's just way too much of a size advantage. So at a short line like three, how do you not take the Bulls? I know they've been bad at home, but how do you not take them? Got to go with Chicago in this one. I'm laying the three. If Drummond plays, I'm really comfortable with that. If he doesn't play, I still feel like I'm on the right side. So give me the Bulls. If you want my top bets for NBA and MLB, just head over to kylecrums.com. They're posted right on the site. You could also get the top bets for my whole staff on there. So Head over there if you're interested. There's also a link to join the Discord on the homepage. Um, if you want to catch the live show, 4 p.m. Eastern time, we'll go through both of these games, and we'll go through all... How many MLB games tomorrow? bunch of them during the day on Wednesday. So whatever the night MLB games will go through in the 4 p.m. show, we'll go through the day MLB games on, in the morning show. So we'd love to see in the comments if you can make it. Let's have ourselves a great Wednesday. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, we had a nice Tuesday night. Remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.